Well now, chap, you've selected the British. Good show. I can't keep that up the whole time. Though I'd love to try. Ow. <laughs> so dumb. This video is a painting guide for World War II tanks for the British in a weathered forest style paint scheme that will have plenty of grime to capture the arduous conditions that they're operating in. But without any delay, let's jump straight in. Primed black, and an odd step to begin with, this is typhus corrosion going down around the treads and splashing up. Nothing to do with the colour, it's just a way to have some gritty texture down beneath my base layers as I build this up later. No airbrush required today, but we are using tweezers and packing foam. What is going on here? Well, my plan is to apply my base layers of browns and greens in a sponging method to give us a finished look that instead of slick assembly line new tanks, we will have tanks on the front line in the middle of a campaign across Europe. The tanks I paint today won't be 100% historically accurate with their paint schemes or their armaments, but if this is important to you, then I have some advice for you. You can look at the box and in the booklet inside which provides information on how each specific tank looked during the various campaigns, and for even more info, jump online and you will find accurate imagery and information. So with my British tanks, I'm already picturing where in the world they will be operating and what style of environment. I'm picturing that they're in Europe in some muddy forest with plenty of lush green hillsides. I mentioned that I've elected to have my tanks appear battle-worn, and the reason I've chosen this for mine is that I think it evokes a story and a feeling that they are veteran soldiers of a prolonged combat rather than they rolled out and they're here on day one. To tie these colours together and to give them a little more life, I'm creating a wash to go over the top. This is a mix of Plague Bearer Flesh Contrast Paint and Contrast Medium, then brushed across the lot. Cracking out the metallic colours and putting down base coats on any of the areas that need them, this can start to feel like tedious work and it's a perfect opportunity to talk to you about batch painting. Batch painting has pros and cons and it's important that you understand them from the outset so that you know what you're signing up for when you get started. Batch painting is when you take a big group of models and tackle them as one large job. You work like your own little assembly line and like I'm doing here, I pick up one model, paint the metal, put it down, pick up the next model, paint it and then so on. The benefits being that this saves you quite a lot of time in the long run and can save you paint because you have little wastage. The con being that it feels slow. You could spend your painting session for that day only completing one colour and progress can be difficult to realise. If you are keen, know this and remind yourself along the way that the pros still exist and create comfort and entertainment. I have a cuppa and some snacks and I'm watching a movie or usually a TV show in the background. Like a real good British comedy, where the men dress up as though they are in fact older women. A real thinking man's comedy. Whilst you watch me work away at the decals, I'll actually tell you a little about what I'm painting. I mean, tanks. Yeah, obviously, thanks champ. But the models themselves are from Warlord Games, and they have a few different games that you can use them in, if you like the sound of rolling some dice and crushing your friend's tanks. First up, there is Bolt Action, which is a tabletop game where you command tanks, troops, and all manner of weaponry against one another. And now they are releasing Aktung Panzer, which is cut down to just a handful of tanks each in a faster skirmish style combat game. So the reason I'm batch painting all of these tanks is so that I can convince Gordon to come over and play a couple of games of Aktung Panzer with me. Fun fact, if you want to get one of your mates into the hobby, the easiest way is that you do all of the legwork and painting and they just turn up and roll some dice. Oh, <laughs> good show. So if you are keen on picking up some of the tanks for you and your mate, I'll add some links below in the video description that can take you either to Warlord Games website or your local game stores that sell them. These are affiliate links, which mean that those companies send a slice of the profit to me at no extra cost to you. And that's a cheeky way that you can support the channel and the videos that I make. Whilst I'm on the weathering stages, I need to ask myself what types of weathering and grime they could expect in this lush, muddy environment. 
With boggy wet fields and river crossings, I expect that there will be lots of mud getting kicked up by the tracks and areas of rust from where the water has been pooling. In this inclement weather, you'd best have a fine pair of wellies. All right, I'll stop doing it now. The rust is created by really thinning down a brown first and then an orange and washing this across the areas that I think water would pool. It looks like a strong wet wash now, but once dry, there will be a subtle rusty dust feel. The video is coming to an end and I feel like I had more to say, but we will keep it rolling and we'll wrap it up so that you can continue your painting journey. However, I do have that mission for you still, which is to leave historical inaccuracy comments below. For example, I've got some of the decals wrong on these British tanks, but rather than accurately correcting me on what I should have done, you need to put some false information in there to keep me entertained. That way, I won't be able to tell who's actually salty with my paint jobs and who's just having a laugh. It's foolproof. But now, here's how the batch painted British tanks turned out. The majority of what I painted today was painted using the Army Painter's new range of Fanatic paints. If you're a beginner in the hobby and you're looking to pick up a range of paints, I honestly do recommend these and you can see from this video and the others how they operate and what sort of results I was able to get with them. But now it's time to decide. Either you are ready to dive into the harsh elements of the desert as we batch paint the German squadron of tanks, or that is old news and you're ready for a new choose your own adventure series and you can dive straight into the world of Warhammer 40,000 as we paint Chaos Space Marines in a variety of different ways. Either way, pick now and I'll see you there. <laughs>